Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the open session, which we are uh, now launching um, uh, following the AGM, the official AGM, which we have just held a few moments ago. So apologies for the delay getting started. We were just getting our tech ready so we can um, uh, stream this live on Facebook. So welcome, everyone. Um, I can see we've got um, 37, 27 attendees. So that's really, really great. So um, good evening, everyone. So. Um, this is the celebration and sharing section of our annual, at the annual general meeting of uh, eight project CIC. Um, my name is Steve Gear, and I am the chair of the board of directors of HCIC. We formally held an election just a few moments ago, so I've been the acting chair up till now. But I am, I can now say, I am the chair of HCIC. Um, so we've held a, uh, the official AGM, including director's reports, a finance report and the election of officers, and we're really pleased now to welcome you to what will be a more informal celebration of what the project has achieved over the last year, and we hope an open conversation about the future of the project and ways to get involved. So I'm going to just do a short chair's report. This is very similar to the one that I've delivered as part of the AGM, but I am going to um, cover a few other things as well. So firstly, as chair, I would like to thank all our team at APE CIC for their resilience, flexibility, and for the dedication that they've shown to the playground, to the bike project, to the wider St Paul's community, and to each other. It has, of course, been a hugely challenging year for everyone. This is a year in which we've all had to adapt to rapidly changing circumstances, and where, of course, we're all now in the third lockdown. However, I'm hopeful that we're finally starting to see that there will be an end to this. So APE CIC is led by Guy Dobson and Rachel Davis, and they're supported by the staff team, the board of directors, and by a great many volunteers. And over the last two years, we've all been getting to grips with the responsibility of running St Paul's Adventure Playground. Um, so we took over the playground in June 2017, taking on responsibility under Bristol City Council's community asset transfer process. Previously, the playground had been a council funded service, but due to funding cuts, the council is not able to fund and run play services for children anymore. And Bristol City Council looked for a community organisation to take over management of the playground. So we now only receive very limited funding from the council for the services that we run. And we're responsible for fundraising through grants and trusts and by running income generating activities. And we're very grateful to the wide range of funders uh, who've been seen the value of this amazing community resource and who've supported us through what is a very difficult period. So St Paul's Adventure Playground, of course, has a, a very long history, which dates back to the 1970s. And when it was set up originally as a council service, however, it was supported in the delivery of that role by a small charity, the St Paul's Adventure Playground Association, which was set up to support the playground. Now SPAG, the St Paul's Adventure Playground Association, is still running and we're very pleased to partner and work alongside SPAG. And if you'd like to find out more about SPAG, the charity, then Hannah John, who is, um, um, is the chair of that charity, and she's also an active supporter of the playground and will be telling us more about that very shortly. Now, looking back to the summer of 2019, of course, we saw the playground before COVID full of children eager to explore, play, swing, slide, dig holes, and generally find adventure um, around the site. And as the evenings closed in, the children played on, but the focus of their play shifted indoors and they began to find adventure through cookery, art workshops and photography all happening on site. As 2019 gave, through to 20, gave way to 2020, everyone was of course looking forward to the, to the, to the days brightening, but instead, um, and the playground full of children, and instead COVID-19 has forced us to close the gates. And on top of this, of course, we suffered the awful um, arson attack, which destroyed the much loved London plane tree and half of our play structure. Since March 2020, the gates of the playground have largely remained shut, but behind the gates, we've been working to secure new funding and to rebuild the structure. Now, Guy and Rachel will be telling you more about the rebuild very shortly. 
During this period of lockdown, we've also been supported by the lottery to run a COVID-19 COVID response project. And Hannah is here to tell you much more about that. So I'm now handing over to a film um, which Hannah presents, which will tell you more about that. 